Hey y'all, Scott here, and I'm in a predicament. You see, I don't want to be called a pussy, so I'll play Call of Duty, but I want to be a pussy while playing Call of Duty. The Call of Duty series, also known as Hey Guys, My Crotch is Huge, I swear, is the best-selling first-person action franchise in history, according to the back of this box. Call of Duty has been around since 2003, with the first entry being released exclusively for PC originally. The series focused on World War II until it gradually lost all of its marbles and went effing crazy, until recently when it came back home with Call of Duty World War II. The series really got popular with the release of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare on the PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360, and during that generation of gaming, Call of Duty dominated sales charts each and every year, with most people scrambling to play the game on any of those three platforms. But the majority of Call of Duty releases came alongside a version released for the best-selling console at the time, the Wii. You see, it made perfect sense, the best-selling game meets the best-selling console. Of course, the Wii was about as powerful as two sticks of butter, so getting these games to run on it required a deal with the Mafia at the very least. Surprisingly, the only game to skip out on a Wii release was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Every other mainline console game from Call of Duty 3 to Modern Warfare 3 received a Wii port. So let's see just how jank or unjank these games are. Before we divulge, I am not a Call of Duty fan. I know, that statement was made for shocking. I've tried to get into the games before, but I always ended up quickly washing out my mouth with Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. To be honest, I've had fun with the games, but never got into them so hard that I play for hours upon hours like every other teenage boy in junior high did. I was always more of a Nintendo guy, so let's see what Activision had prepped for the rest of us. Of course, the main controllers for the Wii are the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combo. The Wii Remote is already terrifyingly gun-like with the B button trigger on the bottom, so surely this is a match made in heaven. The Wii also features support of GameCube controllers and Classic controllers, which offer more standard control layouts. But you really think I'm gonna look at every Call of Duty release on the Wii using actual controllers? Please, we're using the only moral controller setup, the one that makes the most sense for Call of Duty on Wii, a nunchuck attached to a Luigi Wii Remote. The mainline Call of Duty franchise was originally developed only by Infinity Ward, but as the series went on and became annualized, mainline entries began to alternate developers. When one game was made by Infinity Ward, next year's would be done by Treyarch. The team dipped their toes in the franchise with the console counterpart to Call of Duty 2, subtitled Big Red One, but were able to take a full-on whack at the series with Call of Duty 3 in 2006. This was not only a launch title for the Wii, but also the PS3, and both came out a full week after the other versions. First things first, the game bellows that it's been licensed by Nintendo, thank god I was worried there for a sec. Taking place in World War II, we take control of Private Nichols, and I can't do this. Like I said, this was a launch title for the Wii, and it's wholeheartedly obvious. In the conversion to the Wii, the multiplayer mode was cut, but overall it's the same game as it was on other platforms. Except this time around, we get to control a car like this, dear god. Call of Duty 3 exclusively utilizes the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and oh boy does it exclusively utilize the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. You can't use the GameCube controller or the Classic controller, this Call of Duty was made to withstand the power of pointer controls. And man, they are just awkward in this game. You point at the screen to look around and aim and move about with the control stick. That's fine, and that's how it should be. Firing your weapon utilizes the B button, which feels fine, but to aim down your sights you have to use the A button, which just feels off. Whenever you're moving, the aiming reticle disappears, which means it's almost impossible to run and gun. And speaking of which, you can't even sprint in the campaign. Apparently you can sprint in the multiplayer, which of course isn't in this version, wow. We also have a good chunk of areas that require waggling the Wii Remote around. Fighting off an enemy, you have to do the struggling punching motion with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and then put them in the position as if they were a rifle and jab it forward to finish somebody off. But then we get to the driving area, which requires moving the controllers like a wheel to steer your car. Forget about that perfectly fine analog stick you have on that nunchuck right there, forget about just twisting and turning the Wii Remote by itself, no, use both controllers in tandem, this is war. Listen, I dig a good representation of World War II just as much as the next guy, but Call of Duty 3 just kind of felt like every other World War II shooter from 2006, except now with 12 times the immersion. I'll say this, graphically, it looks fine as a Wii game. I mean, it was also released on the Xbox and PlayStation 2, which had comparable hardware, so it has no reason to run like piss, it looks and runs fine. The sound design is great, it feels like a legitimate blockbuster, the sweeping score is fantastic. And the game itself is fine, I could see myself being okay with the concept of beating it, just not on this console. Pointer controls and first person shooters on the Wii still needed some work when this game came out. Call of Duty 3 was generally well received, but is considered one of the weaker Call of Duties. That may be because there were just too darn many World War II shooters out at the time, or because Treyarch just wasn't up to snuff with Infinity Ward, or both, or who knows, I sure don't, I spend my spare time looking at the cover of Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, I'm not qualified to say this kind of trash. Anyways, Treyarch made Call of Duty 3 because Infinity Ward was too busy hammering away at Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, set in modern times, 
which released in 2007 for the PC, 360, and PS3, but not the Wii. The next title in the series in 2008, Call of Duty World at War, was developed by Treyarch yet again, went back to the World War II setting, and released on the PC, 360, PS3, and the Wii again, day and date with the other versions. Here we are, Call of Duty, World at War, what a lanky cursor. The game makes sure to let you know it's compatible with the Wii Zapper. This was an accessory made for games like this, but it always bugged me the games would say they're compatible with it. Literally, it's a hunk of plastic, every game is compatible. That's like putting a sticker that says, compatible with the sense of sight on a bottle of mustard, like, yeah. I used to have a Wii Zapper, but that bad boy is long gone, so we're just gonna play with the standard remote and nunchuck combo. Just when you're ready to jump knee first into the campaign, World at War warns about the use of graphic historical footage, and the term Hitler shit on the ESRB rating is finally starting to make some sense. There are two types of Wii games out there, anti-Nazi and pro-Nazi. Call of Duty World at War ends up in the anti-corner because we are just absolutely obliterating these things in the game. Actually, that's only one half of the story. You play as the American soldier Private Miller and the Soviet Dimitri. America vs. Japan, Soviets vs. Nazis, have at it. I wondered if these two character stories would ever cross paths, but nope, it's just two different sides of World War II, and the campaign just hops between the two characters. Alright, so how are them positives? I'm happy to say the control issues present in Call of Duty 3 have been remedied here. Treyarch finally got a hold of how Wii Remote controls should work in a first-person shooter. Aiming down sights has been moved to the Z button on the nunchuck, which feels much, much better than the A button. You can actually sprint in this game, and overall it feels pretty good. It's so immersive, I truly feel like a world at war. That's a little thing I like to call hyperbole. The controls work well and definitely have their advantages over a standard controller layout, that being incredibly precise aiming. Pointer controls make it pretty obvious whenever you sneeze, however. I do prefer a standard gamepad, but the Wii Remote and Nunchuck work well enough that I can totally see why some people really dig this control setup. It takes some time to get used to, but you can definitely have some fun with these controls. That's it, World of War is trash on the Wii. I mean, I can tell this is a good game and would be a decent romp on the PC, 360, or PS3, but God, this is a tart port of the game. It's very obvious this was a Call of Duty game made for current gen hardware at the time, and was then hastily ported to lesser hardware. Animations run at such a low frame rate, and the game itself just doesn't look good, even for the Wii. World of War takes itself so seriously, which is perfectly fine, this is a war story, but man, with animations and graphics like these, they might as well be sock puppets and it would feel the same. While it's super dark and gritty, the animations make me feel like I should be clapping and stomping my foot to them, they really don't look great. It's also missing like, a ton of content. The Nazi Zombies mode isn't here, which is why many people liked World at War. Even full missions are missing, but really, my main problem problem is the glitches. This is a glitchy, unappealing version of World at War. I really didn't have a hoot with this one. 2009 marked the release of Modern Warfare 2, developed by Infinity Ward for the PC, 360, and PS3. No Wii version this time, instead on the same day, Activision released a Wii version of the original Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Reflex Edition. When Modern Warfare was initially released, the developers obviously asked how do we appeal to a younger demographic, and bada boom, that's how it's done. Modern Warfare takes place in the future. 2011, the first Call of Duty to stray away from the World War II setting, and at this point, after playing those two things, Modern Warfare is a breath of fresh air, and I guess that's how people felt in 2007 when this game was released as well. You think the market's oversaturated with futuristic shooters nowadays, 10 years ago people were saying the same thing about World War II shooters. I gotta say, this is how you do a Wii version of Call of Duty. Modern Warfare took the Call of Duty series and turned it into a true AAA blockbuster. Everything was amped up in this release, the cinematics, the gameplay, the level design, the story, the multiplayer, everything. And honestly, it's all here in the Wii version. Treyarch handled the port to the Wii, and gone are the sour controls of Call of Duty 3. Gone are the plethora of graphical problems and glitches in World at War. This is Modern Warfare, just on the Wii. Of course, it doesn't look as nice. Alas, it doesn't run poorly, just a lower resolution, lesser textures, lower poly models, and while it is still susceptible to problems here and there, overall, this is how you do a Call of Duty game on the Wii. I'd say it could have definitely used some classic or GameCube controller support, but this is a solid port. And yeah, I had some fun with this game. I'd still rather play the traditional versions, but it's a solid game. And I've been seeing this screen quite a lot lately. I was killed by a grenade, and I have to watch out for the indicator. Oh, so that's what that icon meant. Next up in 2010, we had Call of Duty Black Ops, which shipped day and date on the Wii alongside the PC, 360, and PS3, developed by Treyarch. This is a continuation of World at War and takes place during the Cold War, and I don't have much to say about this one other than it's a solid game. I think this truly proved the worth of Treyarch, not just as a good developer, but being able to live up to the standards of, and possibly even outdo, Infinity Ward. It's a solid game, and the Wii version works fine. It's very similar to the quality of Modern Warfare Reflex Edition. Lower quality graphics here, and even some parts of the story missions are cut, but by and large, I don't think it's too far-fetched to say if you played Black Ops on Wii, 
you experienced Black Ops. It's also the first Call of Duty on the Wii to offer support for the classic and GameCube controllers. God does exist. Also, the multiplayer servers are still online if you're looking for something to do next weekend. The last Call of Duty released on Wii, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, developed by Infinity Ward, released in 2011. And honestly, at this point, I'm sick of playing Call of Duty, so I didn't get far in this one. Yeah, yeah, the frame rate isn't as good, it doesn't look as nice, but hey, it's still basically Modern Warfare 3. It surprised me just how competent it looked, to be honest. But God, this game seems to be really pushing the Wii. Let me tell you, you know a game's demanding when the Wii sounds like it's choking. Two more Call of Duties were released on the Wii brand of consoles, that being Black Ops 2 and Ghost, released on the Wii U. There's not much to say about these ones, basically since the Wii U was on par with the Xbox 360 and PS3 power-wise, these are pretty spot-on versions of the games. Overall, the Wii had its share of good and bad versions of Call of Duty. I gotta say, I did get used to the Wii Remote controls after a while, and they can be fun. Modern Warfare Reflex Edition and Black Ops both are solid ports on the Wii, but nowadays, there's real no reason to play these. These were made for the people who only had a Wii. Now, 360s, PS3s, and these games on those platforms are so cheap, I don't think anybody really has a reason to play these anymore. You may say the accuracy of the Wii Remote controls gave these versions merit, but at this point, just play the PC versions with mouse and keyboard. You'll get the exact same accuracy. In fact, you'll get more accuracy. I'm still not way into Call of Duty, but I do think it's pretty neat to look back and see exactly what corners were cut to get these things running on the Wii. But hey, what do I know? Just to reiterate how unqualified I am to be critiquing or even talking about the Call of Duty franchise, let's take a look at my resume. I am going fucking nowhere.